Am I the a-hole for ripping up my brother's apology letter and screaming at him to just leave me alone? We aren't family? Context and a very short version. When I was 17, I was in a relationship with my twin brother's best friend Jake. It lasted eight years, till we were all finished college and my ex had gotten enough money off his extremely religious parents to get a head start in life. If you don't know where this is going, my brother and Jake were together the whole time and used me as a cover because my feelings didn't matter. My brother had been out since his teens, which is why they came up with the idea to use me so his parents wouldn't get suspicious. My parents were angry with my brother, even cut contact for a year, but they all made up and have been pushing since for us to speak again. I refused to speak to my brother due to how they dismissed me. When everything came out, Jake literally said, you wouldn't understand, I had no other choice. My brother was worse. Like, I get where Jake was coming from because his parents are nuts, but I didn't deserve to be treated like that. It's been five years since everything came out and I'm currently pregnant with twins with my soon-to-be husband. My brother and Jake moved back to our hometown last year and they both have been trying via my family slash friends, even co-workers, to get me to talk. My mother begged me to sit down like an adult and not let the past ruin my son's chance at having a relationship with her uncle. That the hate I have for my only sibling is ruining our family and my mental health. Then a few hours ago, I stopped by for lunch and to show my parents scanned photos. And guess who was there? The happy couple. I was literally in shock for a few minutes. Then when my brother tried to hug me, I pushed him away. I got so worked up, I physically couldn't stop shaking at this. My brother and Jake tried to apologize, talk about what happened, and beg for a relationship. I was in tears and begged them to leave me alone. At the end, my brother handed me a letter and said, I really wish things could be different. You're my sister, my twin. I do love you and it kills me we don't have each other anymore. So basically, I lost it. Ripped up the letter screaming that we weren't family and I just want him to leave me alone. I walked out after that and had to get a taxi home because I was too upset to drive. Since then, my parents and family members have told me I'm cruel and bitter, that I need to stop living in the past and get over it. Now for the comments. Not today, home. I feel sorry for Jake with his homophobic parents, but what he and your brother did to you is horrible. They betrayed your trust, both as a romantic partner and as a sibling. If they had told you the truth at age 16, you might have even offered to be a cover. But instead, they chose to lie to you for eight years. No one, not your brother, not your parents, no one gets to determine when you should be over it. You are not obliged to accept any apology, ever. And tell your parents if they can't respect your feelings and your decision, they will no longer be part of you or your children's lives. I've actually have been asked this multiple times, and the honest truth is if they told me the truth from the get-go and asked me to be his fake girlfriend, I probably would have done it so my brother could have been happy. They took that choice away from you. You do not owe them forgiveness. Well, they haven't actually offered a straightforward apology. Might be a decent start. And Opie definitely not day hall and has zero reasons to ever choose to receive it if they do. Not day hall. They are monsters. They stole eight years from your life because there were like no other options. Now they're sorry? Yeah, right. Maybe they want something from you, like being their surrogate in the future. I would stay with no contact with them and low contact to no contact with your parents. You did not break your family. They did it. And now they're harassing you and putting your well-being in danger. Screw them all. Be strong. I don't even think of that, to be honest. Well, they planted to use you once. With that kind of disgusting and horrible people, everything is possible. I'm so sorry, Opie. Not today, home. Your mother ambushed you. You should cut off the lot of them. I think I will with my parents till at least after I've given birth. Or I get it in writing that they won't try that again. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for walking out of my surprise birthday party? So, it was my 20 female birthday today and from the minute I woke up, nobody has acknowledged my birthday. I walked downstairs to my kitchen and my mom was reading her newspaper, ignoring me completely. She even had some demands about cooking and cleaning, so my day already started a little off. My dad and brother both ignored me as well. 
Normally, my dad wishes me at least a happy birthday, but today he just said nothing. My friends seem to have forgotten it as well, as they literally said nothing. My friend messaged me about some clothes, but nothing more. I just didn't feel special, as stupid as it sounds. It was the same at work. My colleague spoke about my birthday yesterday, yet today nobody acknowledged it or said anything. I just felt so miserable and ignored. So before heading home after work, I bought myself a small birthday cake just to treat myself and make it a little better. Well, when I got home and ready to just have a dip, my whole family slash friends and colleagues were in my living room. They told me how they had been all excited to surprise me, but I just couldn't help myself but feel upset. They ignored me throughout the whole day, and now they want me to be all happy and chatty? I just walked out. I walked back to my car and now I'm sitting in a McDonald's parking lot writing this. My phone is being blown up about me being the a-hole for walking out. I do feel kind of bad, but I just couldn't do it anymore. Should I have just sucked it up or was I the a-hole for walking out? People seem to be confused about surprise parties in here. Surprise parties don't mean you go the whole day without acknowledging the birthday and making someone feel awful as a bit. It just means you don't acknowledge that there is a party that is going to take place. Lol, right? Some commenters seem to think the point of a surprise party is to make you feel absolutely awful about yourself first. Then when everyone yells, surprise, you can feel happy and live again. Life is not a sitcom. I'd be feeling awkward if someone threw me a surprise party, because I would already have plans or plan to not have plans. I'm not the most sociable person anyway, so a surprise party just isn't me. Not today, home. People really need to stop going with plans that only happen slash work in fiction. Normal people with their heads in right can still manage a surprise party while also saying happy birthday and the like. Nothing that happens implied plans or care and it's very okay to be upset by the emotional whiplash. Please don't listen to anyone saying that not saying happy birthday when a surprise party is planned is normal. It's not. Correct. I have thrown and have had surprise parties thrown for me. Not once was the birthday guy slash girl ignored all day beforehand. It's stupid and mean. I hate the idea of having a surprise party for myself, but I've helped thrown them for several people who I know would love them. There's always been some setup first, and no one would ignore the person. For my moms, my dad pretended that they were going out to a fancy dinner, and they were just dropping me and my brother off at my grandparents' house for the night. The party was in their backyard. One of my close friends thought her boyfriend was taking her to brunch, which he was. It was just that a dozen of us were also there. Even the ones where the person came home to a big surprise, we usually found a way to make them think they were doing something sociable. So they were dressed and ready for some sort of something even without knowing that it was a party. Next story. Am I the a-hole for being mad at my parents because they withheld information about my medical history from me? I have had nose and sinus issues my entire life. I could never breathe out of my nose to the point where not only my smell and taste were almost non-existent, but I could only mouth breathe. I also had a snot 24-7. Sometimes it was like a leaky tap where it would not stop. I went through so much clothes and beddings because of getting snot all over everything in my clothes too. I got made fun of a lot at school and it used to make my teachers angry. I was so self-conscious and didn't have any friends. My parents always said there was no cure or anything when they took me to the doctor. At the beginning of this year, I moved for a job. I grew up in Nevada and the job was in Louisiana. I got here a few weeks before my start date to get set up. This is where it started. Within days of moving here, I could breathe out of my nose. No more snot and I can smell a taste. It freaked me out at first because this had never been possible in my life. I'm not a mouth breather anymore and my sleep is not disturbed now. One of the good things about my job besides the pay is that it comes with insurance. I got a checkup at the dentist, the eye doctor, and a doctor for the first time since I was 12. I had these when I was a kid, but when I was about 12, my dad got a new job, but the insurance was not good. We only went to the doctor or dentist for major things like a broken bone. I was still on my dad's insurance before I got my job. My new doctor asked for my medical records if I had them. 
My first doctor was gone, but the building is still there, and they had mine from a long time ago. There wasn't much from the second. This is where I found out my parents lied to me. In my old records, it says a bunch of times the dry air hurts my sinuses. The doctor says a less dry climate would relieve them, but besides that, there is medication, and a humidifier would help. It says so over and over. They never told the second doctor this information either. I asked my parents about it, and they were angry that I got the medical records because they said it was private. My mom said they didn't try medication because it was too much of a hassle to remember to give me the pills. My dad said moving was out of the question since it would remove my sister from her friends, and a humidifier was too much work for mom. I'm not so self-centered to think they should have moved, but if I had this info when I was older, I could have been responsible for my own medication, and I would have moved from Nevada when I was 18 if I knew it would help. My parents must have told my sister everything because she blew up my phone with calls and messages, saying I shouldn't have snooped into medical records. And mom and dad were right to tell me there was no cure because the medication and other stuff was too much to put on their plate. Am I the a-hole for being furious about this? If I knew, I could have taken steps to fix this when I was old enough. I'm also perturbed they think me not being able to breathe properly was no big deal. Now for the comments. Not day home. Yes, those records were private, but they weren't private from you. Those are your records. Your parents were being very neglectful and awful. I'm so glad you can live your new life in a place that is healthy for you. My mom said they didn't try medication because it was too much of a hassle to remember to give me the pills. They had various medical interventions available, yet they chose to neglect Opie's needs because it was an inconvenience. The gall on them to get mad at Opie. Humidifier was too much work for mom. You put water in a tank and plug it in. Hell, Opie probably could have done it himself. Some people should not be parents. Yeah, I learned to operate a basic one at like age four. And the medicine regimen for dry sinuses usually isn't terribly difficult either. I got seasonally dry sinuses. Doctor just told us to get OTC saline spray and come back if it didn't clear up for a prescription. Even pills and kids aren't that bad. After dry sinus season, we went immediately to pole in hell season, and mom just plopped our breakfast down on a kitchen table with a side of Claritin. Of all the medical conditions that a child can have, I feel like dry sinuses should have been one of the easiest to manage. They didn't try medication because it was too much of a hassle and a humidifier was too much work for mom. Apparently, being a parent was too much work for them as well. This is negligence. Plain and simple. Not day home. Yes, this is straight-up negligence. As in, if CPS had found out about this, it would have been a problem. Negligence. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for letting my niece drink and watch graphic movie? I was spending a weekend at our family's cabin with my sister's family. They came in a few hours after me, 37 female, and realized they left a bunch of stuff they needed so they were going to drive into the nearest town for them. My niece, 23, wanted to stay behind to enjoy the lake, so they left her behind. But it started raining and there's no data or Wi-Fi at the cabin, so she complained there was nothing to do since she forgot to download something. I had my laptop with me that had a bunch of old movies on it and gave it to her. I didn't check what she was watching and she had her headphones in so I didn't hear anything. I didn't bother to check either because I assumed she was an adult and could watch whatever she wanted anyway. Then she asked if she could get one of the beers I'd brought with me and some of the snacks, and I said okay and went to lay down. My sister, husband, and brother were back after maybe one and a half hours and found her watching Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, 2009 version, and on her second beer. They were so mad and were yelling at her, until she said I gave her the laptop and said she could have some beer. And then they got mad at me saying she isn't allowed to drink, and the dirty movie was going to turn her into a cheap woman. I definitely remember drinking as a family with my nephew who is 21. Age of drinking is 19 as we live in British Columbia, Canada. I asked if she had a medical condition or are in meds, and they said no, but alcohol was bad so no one should drink. They dismissed when I asked why my nephew was drinking with us near the holidays if she wasn't allowed to, and they argued if they didn't let him drink at home, he would go out and get drunk and get into trouble anyway. But my niece was a good girl and wouldn't drink if it wasn't around. 
In my opinion, if my niece wants to drink, she can walk into any liquor store and get it anyway. So as long as she's not drinking too much, it shouldn't be a problem. But am I the a-hole for letting my niece drink and watch a graphic movie? Not the a-hole. 23 is an adult. You weren't letting her do anything. She made a choice. This is hilarious. When I was 23, I went backpacking around Europe for 10 weeks on my own. Met up with friends here and there, but mostly on my own. When I got back, my younger brother had mentioned that a friend of his was shocked that my parents let me go. He basically had to explain to this girl that I lived on my own, in a different city, made my own money, and was a grown adult. There was absolutely nothing my parents could have done to stop me. Not that they wanted to. Absolutely not stay home. Not stay home. You didn't let anyone do anything. She's 23. Lol. She's been able to buy her own alcohol for almost five years. That's insane. And she has been able to watch an R-rated foreign films for almost six years. Not stay home. What the heck is wrong with your sister? That's wildly creepy, calling a grown woman a good girl as a parent. That is disgusting. She's not a child. Low-key perverted. Like they want to keep her purity or something. Nasty AF. Very weird. And watching a girl with a dragon tattoo will turn her into a cheap woman? What planet do they live on? And why does Nice put up with this at 23? Not stay home. As someone who tolerated this into their 20s, you think it's normal until you can get away. Then you realize it's messed up.